Okay, so this is Mark Sell, and I'm my YouTube channel is Therapy for the Heart, and I have uh, Dr. Stella Acquarone um, here now, and I just surprisingly caught her by somewhat by chance. And where are you now? I am in London at the moment. You're in London, so. Um, um, Stella, as I can call her now because we're fast friends almost. Um, Stella, what are you working on right now? Well, I, I'm actually working on a book that I find very difficult to, to sort of conclude on my success in treating early autism in little children because um, it's complicated. There are several aspects that are uh, that I'm working on, several layers in the understanding of what is going on. And uh, sometimes we act in a way that we think that the child needs, and that produces good results. The problem is that it is uh, problematic the explanation of why those changes occur and they happen. For example, sometimes uh, the explanation could be very simple, that the child needed to feel very much uh, held and contained between the arms of the therapist or the mother or the father, and that that, that produce a kind of regulation, internal regulation of the biological functions and that that helps the regulation of the psychic um, um, structures and allows the child to calm himself down and, and uh, be able to pay attention and concentrate and learn and become curious and usually children that are mute start talking but there must be many more things that are happening at these different levels that somehow it, it would be interesting to to uh, be able to put together other theories as to what is happening uh, not only regulation of internal states that produce a calm uh, psychical state, but other processes that maybe are related with feeling safe, feeling contained, that the parents are not fretting or not becoming frightened by what is happening. So. Um, it's a mutual, uh, it's a mutual uh, calibration of dynamics that occurs. And somehow I always say that what I do, do with a child and the intensive infant family treatments are like open brain surgery, where I'm trying to rewire the connections in a way that they could um, become automatized, positive connections. And then it's necessary to prolong uh, this, the, the solidification or the, or the um, help in this process to become uh, usual ordinary, normal, and that is difficult to explain. Okay, I was wondering, I had one question, I'm going to have to sign off, um, I don't want to, I'm going to have to because I have a patient coming in in a, in a few minutes, but um, does your thinking uh, along different lines, is that going to affect the way you intervene with a mother and her autistic child when you work with them, do you think, or is it too early to say? Well, what I always do is I follow my counter transfers. I am well aware that uh, these processes are very uh, difficult and, uh, and twisted, and they are 
uh, difficult to be elaborated or uh, understood by the parents. And is that why the parents become paralyzed and the child becomes going off in a in a developmental in a development that is atypical. So what I try to do is to use my counter transference as the base in order to align, understand, stay, transform and talk about it. But because there are several <laughs> levels of verbalizations, that is what is uh, making me try to read all the advances or different perspectives on autism. I have another question. I don't know if you you may remember, but you presented a case at the uh, conference at the uh, NAAP? Yes. Yes. And you presented a uh, autistic child, and the intervention that you made was very effective between mother and child is that you said to both mother and child, you know, you had a very difficult delivery. And at that, po at that moment, the child, the mother began to cry, and also the child began to cry. Yes. I was wondering, was there a particular that you remember counter-transference reaction um, that you uh, remember that um, gave you the idea to have that typical, uh, that, that intervention, not typical, but that intervention, or it might have been just your sensitivity in general about what happened with them that might have uh, made you think of that kind of intervention? Well, what I, uh, I, I, I really had the sensation that they were both frozen and I couldn't understand that. So I was trying to find out what had happened. And in fact, uh, the, the baby had been, um, was in the first 15 days in the hospital, he was not attended by anybody more than changing and feeding because the mother was about to die all the time. And at the end, she survived and didn't die. But what had happened, it was that the mother was terrified of dying by the time that she could help hold her baby. And the baby was terrified of, of everything. And so the child had started to dissociate in a very severe and strong way and was in lethargy and sleeping all the time. So somehow I realized that when I started asking the mother about that period, the child opened the eyes and was trying to be awake. And so I had the, the strong sensation that they were frozen and I said to the mother, I think that you are both frozen in a traumatic delivery. And that was what made the child cry, the mother cry and start melting the ice. And the child could also, for the first time, started to cry as well. And the mother couldn't cope with the cry of the infant because couldn't cope with her fear and her cry. But the therapy, the psychotherapy was about that, putting words into that extreme panic. And Free, frozen state. Yes, I remember that incident where the mother started to cry and the baby started to cry and at the moment the mother um, put the pacifier in the baby's mouth almost as if it was too, it was unbearable for her to continue at that moment even though she That's did. Good. Yes. Do you remember? I remember that. Yes, it was very poignant because the mother couldn't, uh, didn't know what to do with the baby's crying because really she was full of fear and hate for the baby. The baby underneath was giving her and all the family was blaming the baby for almost killing the mother. But the poor baby didn't have anything to do with that. It was circumstances of a bad delivery and postnatal uh, infection and illness. 
that yes. was so terrible for the mother's life. Not the baby in itself, right. but everything was projected and placed on the baby and was paralyzing. Did you say that the mother was uh, full of fear and, and also uh, hate, hating the baby un unconsciously? Yes. Yes, yes, I see that. Okay, That's thank you very much. My patient just rang the bell. Yes. So I have to go, but this is Mark Sell and uh, Stella. It's okay for me to put this on YouTube. Yes. Okay, thank you, and I'll alert you to when it goes up. And uh, thank you so much, and I look forward to see seeing okay. you again and uh, and saying hello. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye.